Welcome to Totino Grace High School for Northwest Suburban Conference Softball. The season opener for the Eagles as they take on Armstrong. And our season opener for you here on CCX Sports as well. I'm Jay Wilcox along with Kurt Cardinal and they... Uh, and it jumped the gun here, started a little early. So the first two base runners have reached for Armstrong. Aubrey McLeodon, the DP, walked. And then Sidney Primer, the first baseman, hit a single to left field. So runners at first and second for Armstrong. Peyton Erickson, their pitcher, is the hitter. Caroline Pollard in the circle for Totino Grace. Well, Jay, we can't uh, fault them for wanting to get going on a beautiful day like this. Uh, after we've been waiting for this for... Uh Nine months probably to get going again. And that pitch in the dirt gets away though from the catcher Maya Anderson. So both runners will move up. And two into scoring position with nobody out here for Armstrong. I'm sure Coach Crosby likes this uh, getting a couple runners on start the season and uh, put a little pressure on the uh, Eagles defense here. Erickson, a veteran presence in their lineup and lifts this one foul and out of play down the first base side. Falcons did get one game in and lost to Spring Lake Park. That one was played indoors at the National Sports Center Dome. So this is their first time outdoors playing a game. Erickson last year hit 333, five doubles and uh, again is their main pitcher. Takes that one for a strike. Armstrong won the regular season meeting last year with Grace 5-1. to one. Now, Only a couple wins last year for the Eagles. A young team, they got another year of experience under their belt, so they got a pretty good core group returning. But Armstrong uh, also has a good veteran group back. And that one's rifled up the middle for a base hit. It'll score a run. Erickson will hang on at first base as she delivers an RBI single here and Armstrong takes the early 1-0 lead. McLeodon in to score, Primer hanging on at third base. Well, Armstrong's come out here swinging pretty good. A couple of line drives to the outfield. Seem to be in mid-season form here with their swings. Here's another veteran for the Falcons, Elizabeth Bray will step up. She hit 431 a season ago. Runner is going and then the throw back gets away and Primer will score. As Erickson was moving up to second, the throw back to Pollard ticked off her glove. So it'll be an error on the Eagles there will allow the run to score two to nothing. And Bray, besides having a good average last year, also had three homers and five doubles. So somebody that you gotta be uh, concerned with going deep too. On that last play, it looked like they had the first and third play on and throw back to the pitcher to see if the runner from third would bite and try to come home and get her in, get her in a hot box, but uh, didn't quite execute it correctly. The throw was a little high, but it also, I think Pollard might have kind of been in, in eager to try and catch it and throw and instead didn't really watch it into her glove. I think you're exactly right, Jay. Fouled back here by Bray. No matter how much you work on stuff in the gym or in the, de in the domes or on practice fields, a little bit, everything's a little bit quicker in the game. Lined out to left field, and that one is going to get to the fence and will score Erickson easily. Bray digging into second, and now she's going to go for third as the throw was just over the cutoff. And Bray will have a double and then a throwing error will get her over to third. And Armstrong now leading at three nothing. This one really froze the left fielder downing here, although I don't think she was gonna have a shot at it anyway. It was over her head, but those, boy, the liners from a left-hand batter, that can be really tricky. You're right, Jay, not only was it hit hard, it was also kind of slicing away from the left fielder. 
And uh, I think that uh, Coach Solwood has a couple of uh, younger outfielders out there that uh, probably have not seen the ball hit like that and worked on that type of play yet. Lexi Madsen hitting with a runner at third. It pops this one up. Let's see if it'll get out of play, and it will, just over into the Armstrong fan section there. Madsen didn't have a great average last year, but tied for second with 14 runs batted in and had three home runs among her hits. So another one that uh, is capable of really stinging the ball. Armstrong reached their section final last year in section 6-4A. They were defeated by Hopkins, but um, you know, after a kind of a round of regular season of, of 500, they, they played well in playoff time. Knocked YZ out of the tournament, beat them a couple times, and, and uh, won, I believe it was three playoff games before uh, being defeated twice in separate rounds by Hopkins. Yeah, and the last one was two to one. It was a nail biter right down in the section final. Although Armstrong did need two wins in that game where Hopkins only needed the one. Just up with that one there. Catcher Anderson held it in a little bit. I think she thought that one might have been a strike. Madsen fouling this one off. Pollard got a lot of experience last year pitching for the Eagles, and um, you know there were times when they would have liked to have somebody you know to rotate in with her, which we're going to see a little more of this year. It sounds like Adriana Cognetta is uh, playing at second base right now, but is expected to do some pitching um, not only throughout the season but today even. That one is low. Nice stop though to keep the runner Bray at third. And so Madsen will draw a walk, second walk of the inning. And Maddie Fondo will be the batter here for Armstrong. Hit 333 last year with five runs batted in as you get a look at their lineup here. And a lot of familiar names, especially in the middle part of this order, players who've been varsity regulars for a couple, two, three years. Pitch is a strike as Fondo did not pull the bat back in time as she offered at that one. To your point, Jay, I talked to Coach Crosby, and she's very excited about uh, returning players. And then she's also got a couple of uh, players that come up from JV or one that's a ninth grader new to the program that uh, she thinks will really help wound, round out the lineup and the defense. Pounded to third. Here's the throw to first. They get the out there, but the throw home will be too late. And so Bray scores. Fondo will get an RBI. Madsen moves over to third. But the Eagles do get that first out anyway, and that's a, a nice feeling to get that one out of the way as Moxness handled that one clean. And, and uh, you know, sure, you don't love to see a run score, but at this point in the game, that's the play you got to make, just start to get outs. Yeah, hopefully they get their feet under, feet under them a little bit now, and uh, that first one's always a tough one. Gabby Burns, the hitter for Armstrong, looks at ball one up high here, their shortstop, Junior. So they've already put four on the board and still a runner at third with just one out. An opportunity for them to score even one more. Burns here is one of the players that came up from the uh, JV and starting varsity this year, and uh, to have her move in right at a starting shortstop spot, that's a, that's a pretty good uh, confidence from, from the coach. And lifts this one out to right field, and that one is gonna be down for a hit. Run scores, Burns digging into second, and now belatedly goes for third as the ball got away. And that throw to third is wide. They might have had a play on her there. Burns will advance on the throwing error as they score another run. Another one that kind of froze the outfielder there uh, night, but again was probably too deep for her to catch anyway. But they didn't execute very well on the 
on the uh, exchanges there because, well, first of all, Burns wasn't going to keep going, and then when she did, they really actually had a play on her at third but just couldn't quite put that throw on target. And you, as you talked about earlier, you know, you, you run your infield outfield drills and you're, you're just throwing to a teammate and you're firing, but when there's a runner going and you're in the middle of a game, it's a little bit different feel. Right, and the crowds are cheering and the coaches are yelling and uh, sometimes you just need to have that happen a couple of times during game action to feel comfortable going forward. I have noticed that the Falcons have been taking the ball the opposite way very strongly in this first inning. Julia Gerard, the catcher, swing and a miss here. She played uh, uh, some last year, was two for 20 as a hitter for them, and in there in the number eight slot here today, and they try and tack on yet another run with a runner at third. And this one hit well out to left center field, a long run, it's just off the tip of the glove and will fall in. Another run scores. Gerard will be in at second. We'll give that one a double. It was uh, quite a run to get to it. And Burns coming in to score. As unable to quite get to that one was Grabowski. It was a, it was a great effort and uh, just about got there. Off the tip of her glove. Yeah, she tracked that one pretty well. And... Now I think we're going to have a courtesy runner here for Armstrong as Gerard will be run for. Well, Armstrong's hitting the ball pretty well and uh, um, one of their best returning players, Claire Ristenberg, is actually injured. It was one of their better hitters last year and she's not in the lineup today, so... That's going to bode well for Armstrong going forward. Brenna Dumas, the right fielder, stepping in for Armstrong, takes a strike there. Yeah, Riestenberg coming off a good hockey season for their program, which is Armstrong Cooper in, in the winter. Yeah, I think Coach said she had a wrist injury uh, of some sort. Taken for a ball, so this is the ninth batter to hit in the inning for Armstrong. Already leading it six to nothing and still just one out. Slow roller down to second. And they'll get the out, so second out as the runner moves up to third. Two gone, and now Aubrey McLeodon will hit for the second time in the inning as you get a look at the defense there. So, so McLeodon walked and came around to score as the inning has gone on a bit here. That was just before we came up as again they started early here today. Grounded to third, throw across in time and the Eagles will finally get out of trouble here but not before Armstrong puts six runs on the board. On the five base hits, excuse me, four base hits and three errors committed by the Eagles so Big inning to start things out here for Armstrong. And here's a look at the lineup for Totino Grace. Mike Solwald's team uh, will have to climb out of an early hole, but obviously the good news is a lot of game to go here as they'll hit in the bottom of the first. Pollard, the pitcher, hits first. Then Moxness at third base. Maya Anderson, the catcher. Julia Johnson, the shortstop. Adriana Cognetta at second base, Lauren Grabowski in center, Riley McSherry at first base, Tori Knight in right field, and Julia Downing, the left fielder for Totino Grace. And the defensive lineman for Armstrong with Sam Lind in there as the third baseman, uh, not in the batting lineup, and then Burns, Madsen, Primer, Fondo, Bray, Dumas in the outfield, Gerard is the catcher, and Pete Erickson, the returning pitcher for the Falcons. Another multi-sport athlete. I saw her playing tennis in the fall and basketball in the winter, and 
Now as the pitcher for Armstrong in the spring, you don't see as much of that as you used to. No, you sure don't. And especially it's uh, with all the off-season work people do in, in their sports, it's uh, quite a time command to play two or even three sports at a time. It is interesting because almost every coach you talk to, unless they're just giving lip service, I mean, they, they all say they like that when they do that. But I th feel like a lot of kids just feel the pressure that they have to be playing a really extensive softball schedule, say, or basketball, whatever it is. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, every athletic experience helps with the other one. And uh, I think uh, speaking from some past experience, Jay, is I think the parents are the ones that <laughs> try to get the players to specialize in one as they move through. A, so they can have a lot of success, and parents always like that. And then B is uh, to chase that elusive uh, college scholarship. Pollard slicing one back, nearly taking our camera out there on the first base dugout. There's a swing and a miss. Pollard down on strikes to begin the bottom of the first, and Ali Moxness will be the hitter here for Totino Grace. Looks like our crew's already in midseason evading ball form. I like that. Taken for a strike there for Moxness. She is a junior, quite a few juniors who have been playing for a bit. They don't have much in terms of a uh, few seniors in there. Kind of trying to rebuild the depth in their program a little bit. It's been a, you know, the last couple of years haven't been especially strong for Grace, but. Yeah, I talked to, talked to coach today and he was uh, um, saying, we're gonna try to handle our best in the Northwest Suburban Conference, um, but our really, we have really have to gear ourselves towards our four, three, eight section tournament where we run into a lot more teams there our size, our quality. But uh, the challenge in Northwest Urban Conference will harden test you for that kind of stuff. Maya Anderson, another junior stepping in as you get a look at the called third strike that Moxness took. So back to back strikeouts to start the first for Peyton Erickson. Sometimes it can be a little hard when you have such a long inning offensively I mean, granted, it was only the first, so she hadn't had, like, time between innings, but I, it's impressive the way she's kind of come out sharp and taking care of business after watching that long first inning uh, with her team up. Yeah, you're right. When, you're bat when your bats are hot, there's nothing nothing better than to see a pitcher filling up the strike zone and, and getting yourself back into the dugout and get those hot bats uh, back in use. Sliced foul down the first base side there. And I think it also kind of sets a nice tone for, well, for two reasons, your defense, but also for the umpire. When he's seeing strikes right away, I feel like it's more likely that you're kind of going to have them feeling like you're in the groove and, you know, get strike calls. Change up just missing there. You're, ex you're exactly right. It's uh, proving, the, proving the strike zone Proving your pitches in the, in the strike zone goes a long way towards getting those close calls later in the game that are just off the strike zone. And here's a liner to right field, and that'll be a base hit for Maya Anderson as Tatino Grace gets its first hit and first base runner of the game here after a couple of Ks to begin the inning. And now the shortstop, Julia Johnson, will hit. As you can look, just went with that pitch well, stroking it to right. And no real chance to throw her out at first as they were played, swung around over towards straight right and, and relatively deep. Yeah, that was a great approach on the outside pitch. Johnson got jammed a little bit, fouls that one away. She's a freshman in the lineup here for Totino Grace, and uh, obviously they like her ability as being in there at the number four slot. Yeah. 
And lift it down the right field side. Interesting outfield alignment for Armstrong against her. They really swung around toward right. Uh, there's the left fielder is almost in left center, really. Must be pl planning on pitching her outside and hoping she goes that way. This time <laughs> drives it the other way down the third baseline. Having seen uh, um, Erickson pitch last year. She seems a lot more comfortable in the circle, a lot more in command, has a little bit quicker pitches, and uh, seems like she's pitching versus throwing. I mean, the young time, you just try to, when you're a little bit younger, you just try to get the ball over the plate, and she seems to be working the corners really well. Runner is going, the throw down, close play but safe. Grace down by six, not hesitating. And Anderson just gets there. I thought they had a shot at her at first, but she is in with a stolen base. The fielder was out front of the bag a little bit there. Yeah, that's probably the difference. You're, you're your toss is a shortstop to go to the bag and let the ball travel to you versus catch the ball in front of the base and try to tag back, but uh, might have made the difference there. Did she hold up? And they're gonna look, it looks like it will be a walk. Johnson <laughs> fighting mightily to keep from swinging there and she'll get the benefit of the doubt, draws a walk and Cognetta will be the hitter with the runners at first and second now for TG. Well, the Eagles would like to at least put one across the plate here this inning to, to get themselves back a little bit of momentum. We'll see how it goes here with two outs. Fouls this one away. Yeah, and even if they don't, to at least have gotten these runners after striking out the first two hitters, you know, you... you really would think like, wow, this is a discouraging first inning, but now they're at least making some things happen, getting people on a base hit and then a walk. Yeah, it moves the order, so they ha continue to have a little bit of success uh, by the fifth, sixth, seventh innings, your top of the order is getting one more at bat than they normally would versus a lot of one, two, three innings. Taking low for a ball there, throw back to second, and is uh, sneaking in behind there was Madsen, and I think the runner Anderson, I mean, she wasn't that far off, but I think she was surprised they actually threw through, and that turned into somewhat of a close play. Lifted to center field, that'll be down, and throw coming to the plate, and the tag is applied, it's an out for the third out as they will cut down Anderson at home, trying to score on the single by Cognetta. It was interesting because I thought if anything, the play they might have would be a force out at second, but instead nobody was really there and instead they go all the way home. And so the first inning comes to an end and our score after one, Armstrong six to Tino Grace nothing. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. First inning for the Armstrong Falcons. They take a 6-0 lead into the second, although it was very close to at least being 6-1 as Patino and Grace Cognetta with a base hit and then the throw to the plate. They reach on the tag. Boy, it's awful close, and she might have been out. I didn't really think so the first time, but watch Gerard's glove just getting to the runner. 
Oh, it's so hard to tell if you if she had actually made contact with her midsection or if the foot was already in. Yeah, I think when she slid, it looks like her left foot kind of bop, popped up a little bit, and then she brought it down on the plate. That might have been the split second that made the difference. And ruled out on the tag there as Jerron got it. Now, a lot of times, it's, uh, it's always been a pet peeve of mine. You'll hear fans and even coaches and players yelling, the tag was up high. Well, that's irrelevant. If you get it on them before they reach the plate or the base, it's still an out. I don't care if it was on their foot or on their knee or on their hip. Or <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised that between softball and baseball, all the things you watch. Ooh, liner just foul there by Primer. It's not always when the, if the ball beats the runner or the runner beats the ball. There's there's an art to making the tag and an art to making the slide as well. And um, sometimes it, uh, to naked eye, it looks one way, but uh, instant replay or the slowdown like we have here shows it just the other way. And that's when where we had a really good look at it. And even then, I can't be certain, it, you know, just right. whether the glove had actually it was just really a bang, bang play. Actually, from our vantage point here on the first base side, we actually had a better view of it than the umpire. Who, because of where the throw came, the umpire was behind the catcher. And uh, yeah. you like to be looking down on that play versus around the play, but um, sometimes the throw is not where you expect it to be. <laughs> and Gerard, the catcher, uh, had to kind of make a lunge for it because the throw was up high, as high as it was. Lifted out to left field. That one is going to drop in, and Armstrong keeps on hitting. Sydney now two for two as she singled in the first inning and now drops a single into left field. And they kind of had a variety of them in that first inning, too. A lot of really well hit balls, like over outfielders or into the gap, but then some nicely placed ones like that as well. Yeah, Coach Crosby seems to be a prophet. Today when I was talking with her, she told me that they spent a lot of time in the summer and the off season. A lot of the girls don't play club ball, but they had hitting hitting uh, drills and practices through the uh, youth program. Peyton Erickson drives it deep to right center field, and that one's going to roll to the fence. Primer got a late start, though, so Erickson might have to hold up or else she's going to run on her teammate. And the throw gets away. Erickson's going to come all the way around to score. <laughs> and that was going to be an interesting one. If Grace had handled the uh, throw in the field, they would have really had the out at home. Yeah, they might have, they might have had two because uh, Erickson was <laughs> right on the tail of uh, Primer there, and <laughs> they could have maybe been a tag for twice. But that's not the way it worked out. So we'll call that a triple and then a throwing error. I, I, I have no doubt whatsoever that they would have had the out at the plate if the throw was accurate because Primer held up. She didn't read it very well and thought it might be caught. And then Erickson was running up her back. She almost had to keep going. <laughs> Bray. Now those are the kind that you can kind of laugh off when you're way ahead, but that's something, right. you know, a little teaching point there. You got to make sure you're not running you know, up the back of your runner, even though I can understand why Erickson thought that Primer would be farther along than she was. Right. I think Primer had to hold up a little bit between first and second to see if it might be caught, although... Yeah. You could, you, I mean, From our vantage point, it was pretty obvious tell, it wasn't going to yeah. be, but at the same time, I guess you don't, right. you know, you don't want to get doubled off on a play like that either, but... Sure, the Armstrong coaching staff loves the aggressiveness early in the game, early in the season, and shows that uh, they're playing with some confidence. Bray lifting this one. It's curving away and going to get out of play. She had a double in the first inning and kind of right in the heart of that big six-run inning, and they've picked up where they left off. The first two batters have delivered base hits, and they've scored two runs already with an error thrown in there as well for a TG. It's not gone well here for Grace so far. No. Young team versus experienced team, and the experienced team is putting the ball in play hard. It's uh, not, not a good uh, scenario for TG at this point. Ray looks at that one low. Let's go, 
Watches that one into the dirt. Field is really soft, as you might imagine. We, you know, had a fair amount of rain over the weekend and, and through Monday even, and a lot of games postponed Monday, so they've done their best to really rake this one out and get, but uh, it's pretty soft. And laced out to left center field. That'll be another extra base hit as Bray will dig into second here and hang on with her second double of the game. And Armstrong continues to really pound the ball around here early in this game. Yeah, those top four hitters, I think they've hit the ball hard every time that they've hit, they've hit the ball, even on their outs. A little curious here, I'm watching, watching Pollard and then her fastball Seems to be getting hit pretty well. I wonder if she's going to move to some off speed or drop drop ball pretty soon. Madsen knocks it back to the pitcher. Pollard with a good recovery to get the out. The runner moves over to third, Bray. But again, you kind of just get started, go from there, get that first out. Nice play defensively by Pollard. And now Fondo will be the hitter. And you see Bray advancing over to third on that one. Fondo drove in a run with a ground out her first time up last inning in the first. Another opportunity to do something along those lines. I mean, yes, you'd rather have a base hit, but you'd like to bring him in. A little soft liner to second, though. And the catch made. Fondo is out for the second out, and Gabby Burns will hit now for Armstrong. That's going to help Pollard, two outs in a row here. Kept the ball in the infield. Burns doubled in the first, came around to score. Looks at that one for ball one. Well, besides really hitting the ball strong, Armstrong actually has shown pretty good eye at the plate here in this first inning, too. They're not, you know, some of the pitches that maybe are tempting, they're laying off stuff that's out of the zone for the most part. I mean, we haven't seen any real bad swings and misses. <laughs> Just as I say that, that one was quite low. Well, that was her change up right there. That was, a, that was a nice pitch when you're thinking that they're starting to send the fastball. I just actually noticed the, I've been watching the monitor here, it looks like they're going more to the drop ball and the change up all of a sudden here now too. Burns watches that one up high. We'll see if she comes back with the off speed. I think that was just to get her eyes up and her bat to charge up with the fastball and bring something else here. Oof, that one way high. Runner is coming, the flip, and not gonna be in time. And diving in as Bray as she got a good break on that one, will score on the wild pitch. It was interesting because it was, it, it's a short fence here. And I, Anderson, in a way, I was surprised even threw the ball instead of, you know, re retrieving it herself and trying to make a tag. I guess it was kind of in between, though. Yeah. I don't think you would have had much time either way. And Bray, give her credit. She was ready to go. If you hesitate on that play, it's going to be a lot closer. But she was, she was off immediately. Yeah, her, her weight was moving when she saw the ball over the chest of the, of the batter. That one is in the dirt for a walk, and Burns running hard down to first base. Just in case, as it actually, I think, hit the umpire, and catcher Anderson was briefly unsure where it went. So Gerard will be the hitter now for Armstrong. He had a double in her first at bat. Just looking at my scorebook here, it looks like uh, Armstrong has more extra base hits than singles. They're really pounding the ball in the first two innings here. And they have not, you know, none of the hits have really been cheap ones either. <laughs> They've mostly been hard hit. <laughs> the 
This one's a little bit softer, but it's going to drop in well placed despite a really good effort there by the shortstop as uh, Johnson made a lunge for it, but couldn't quite get it. That one will be a soft base hit for Jerron. Excellent jump by the shortstop and just out of her reach. So Dumas will be the hitter here for Armstrong. Couple aboard, two out for Armstrong. They've scored three in this inning. They lead nine, nothing already here in the top of the second. But this early in the game and this early in the season, I think you really still have to keep your foot on the gas pretty strong here. You know, it's only the second inning. You never know. Grace might oh, get yeah. a few runs here and there. I mean, it's not time to start uh, being nice or pulling off or anything like that yet. No, you want to you wanna get, get your swings in while you can. You never know. Next game, you, you may... Uh, not have as many opportunities, so you take advantage of them when you can. And every run helps your pitcher feel more comfortable the next inning when she comes out. That one is over for a strike. Nice pitch right at the knees. And that's one thing that I think would help Pollard too is, it, you know, some of these pitches that have been really hit hard have been up, you know, waist high, things like that. And just in general, a little bit harder to really drive the ball on a pitch low. That one will be in the dirt and each runner will move up. Breeze kicking up a little bit here and we did feel, a, you know, a sprinkle or two. It's been kind of a sunny day for the most part, but still some clouds dark enough that a little rain wouldn't shock us. Dumas a rip and a miss. That one up around the letters there. I wasn't out for the uh, clips yesterday, but I feel like this is the same way. We get sun, or sun when we want it, and now the cloud comes when we don't want it. <laughs> and that one taken down low for a ball. So Dumas will draw a walk. And again, Armstrong is batted around in the second inning as they did the first. And McLeodon will hit. Looks at that one up high for a ball. McLeodon walked her first time up and then Grounded out to third. In the dirt, but a nice stop that time by Anderson, but it's 2-0, and oh, nowhere to put her here with the bases loaded. Kind of know it's been a good day offensively when you're already hitting for the third time and then we're in the second inning. <laughs> yeah, this could be their batting practice for the week. That one is over for a strike as Pollard comes back nicely there. And strike two. Two and two as Pollard tries to get out of trouble here. Big deficit already, but you'd still like to limit the damage if you can here in the second inning. Yep, one pitch away, one good pitch away from getting out of it. And fouled away there as McLeodon is kind of sticking the bat out to keep herself in there. She lives to uh, lives to approach another pitch.
And that one will be a called third strike. Nice pitch. Yeah, Pollard does get out of trouble. Armstrong, though, does tack on three more runs. We go to the bottom of two. It's Falcons nine and Eagles nothing. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. to the bottom of the second inning here on CCX Sports, our season opener for 2024. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jay Wilcox along with Kurt Cardinal and Armstrong leading to Tino Grace 9-0. Eagles L Lauren Grabowski stepping in. Takes a first pitch strike here, the center fielder for Grace. After their first two hitters were retired in the first inning, they, they almost scored. They had a, a single and a walk and then another single, but the lead runner was thrown out at home plate uh, to end that bottom of the first. That one over four called third strike and Erickson will get her third strikeout of the game. Riley McSherry will bat. There's a nice pitch sequencing there, outside, outside, and then got her on the third strike on the inside so part of the plate. Taken for a ball there. In on the hands there and foul that one away. So one and one. McSherry is one of uh, the Eagles captains this year along with uh, Gentilla. Hit that one hard but foul, pass first. Well, here's two for, for Erickson you, where you, you still want, you know, to pitch your way. You don't you don't want to just say, well, we're so far ahead. You can just throw it right over the plate. And, you know, you still want to work your game. And it's such a short spring high school season, too, that, I mean, every game out here is kind of an opportunity to, to you know, get better and do things the right way. And that's the way they got to look at it. Yeah, you definitely, as a team, want to build some momentum, especially... Um, you know, these two teams, they have a couple more games later this week with the weather that was um, some postponements and rescheduling for last week, so. Down to first base and well handled there by Primer, so two up and two down for Grace here in the second and the right fielder Tory Knight will be the batter now for the Eagles. You're right, Jay. If you get some momentum going in this shortened softball and softball season, it uh, can carry you a long way. And I, I've said this before in past years too: is part of spring sports. I feel like, you know, yes, talent and depth and all of that, but also just the ability to concentrate and come out each day because there's so many things going on at the end of the school year. People are thinking ahead to what they're going to be doing in the summer or next uh, school year if they're going off to college and 
and uh, there's just a lot of things going on and sometimes the weather's not all that great I feel like the teams that are able to have a group that you know takes it seriously and concentrates really has a leg up driven down the right field line but foul you're exactly right on that point you just made Jay uh, some of us old time coaches we have uh, from spring we have a we have a saying that uh, there's a senior spring sport slide <laughs> that happens depending on uh, where the seniors uh, um, focus is like you said a lot of a lot of different things prom and college and and uh, end of the year and end of your high school career so it can go per go south for seniors who aren't very focused but uh, if you have some good leadership it helps a lot especially with spring sports well and that's the other part of it too yeah you, you, you know the the ninth graders or whatever are kind of watching what the seniors are doing too so you don't want it uh getting away from you in that regard too just sort of sets the tone for years going forward if that's how it's going to be a little chopper down to second and Madsen, no trouble with that one. So a one, two, three, second inning work by Erickson for Grace. No runs, no hits, no one left. We've played two. It's nine nothing, Armstrong. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. in here between innings. 9-0 Falcons as we go to the third inning here on CCX. The 2-3-4 spots in the lineup coming up and pitching change here for Totino Grace as we expected coming into the day. Uh, Adriana Cognetta will move over to do the pitching and Moxness will move from third base to second and then Pollard is over at third now for Totino Grace. This was, was by design, by plan, and obviously, um, you know, Armstrong hit the ball well, too, against Pollard, but this was already going to be happening, regardless of how she did today as Pollard moves to third. We see her there. Cognetta, the freshman, will throw here, and Sydney Primer, the batter. Ooh, and she lifts it out to left field, but this one hangs up and up and will be caught by Downing, the left fielder. So a line out to left to begin the third. Another pretty well hit ball, but this one more at the outfielder and well handled. We said there have been a couple that were really tough and froze the corner outfielders, and that time she stayed right with it. Right. Here's Erickson, who's two for two as a hitter, besides doing well pitching. I'm sure the freshman pitcher coming in on her first... Uh First at bat, likes to see that uh, first out taken, taken care of pretty handily. Yeah, and handily. Even, yeah, even if it was a you know relatively well hit ball, it's still just to see it go into your teammate's glove makes you feel a little bit better. And I'm sure Grace is kind of thinking too that things have to kind of balance out a little bit. Some of these hard hit balls that Armstrong's had, maybe are going to go at people a little more. I mean, you, it's unusual to just keep continuing to getting base hits like that. Oh, oh that one is dropped by the first baseman. And then a little collision there. It should have been out number two, but instead uh, we're unable to make the catch. That's uh, 
Gentile coming in there at first base, by the way. So call it an E3. The throw was definitely right on target. Yeah, looks like she uh, has an experienced first baseman. Uh, if it's below your waist, your glove should be open onto the bottom. And she tried to catch it down and tipped off the, the end of her glove. So be, Bray, Bray yeah. will be the hitter here with a runner at first and one out. Was well handled by the shortstop, so we'll give her some good credit on that pickup. But Back up the middle, and that one will be a hit as Erickson checks in at second. So Braid had two doubles and now a single in her third at bat. Lexi Madsen will step up now for the Falcons. It's a little bad luck for uh, Cognetta there. Ground ball just Anywhere else at someone would have been another out, but just found a hole. Was hit pretty well, but just in a good spot as well. And Erickson alert enough to get in there to second. Uh, those are the kind that, you know, you kind of at first glance think, eh, there might be a shot to throw out at second, but she made it easily. Lifted back foul. Taken for a ball there. Obviously, we still got a you know at least a couple innings to go to the the ten run rule comes in effect. But if you're Armstrong, you do kind of mentally want to get into that double digit so that you know you can end business early if it comes to that. Right. Even though those are even though these are some good good conditioned athletes uh, playing three games in four days or. Four games in six days, uh, it does have a wear on your body. So, yeah, if you can save a couple innings one time, you want to do it. Taken up high for a ball by Madsen, so she will draw a walk. They're loaded up now for Maddie Fondo. She's going to feel, feel a little left out. She hasn't got a hit yet. She hit the ball a couple of times, but uh, no, no hit yet. That one is over for a strike. Another multi-sport athlete for the Falcons. That one was outside. As a former pitching coach, whenever I watch pitchers, I'm looking for a couple of things. One, obviously, if they can throw hard. That's, that's first, but they can't throw hard, then it's location and mix. Dribbler to third, and let's see. They'll get the out Calder. at first. However, two runs come in to score on the play as Gentile just barely was able to hang on or get back to the bag there. So they'll... Get the out at first. You see the throw pulls her off a little bit and then reach back with her foot and just got there, but some alert base running by the trail runner to score. Bray coming in from second. Yeah, that was. For Tatino, I, um, third baseman Pollard had great, great range to her left and uh, first baseman made a nice stretch and returned to the base. Uh, kind of made up for that uh, Bobble earlier in the inning, but that was a very athletic play with the first baseman. Burns lifting this one to short center field. It'll be in for a hit, and it will score another run as Lexi Madsen touches home on that one. Burns getting her second base hit of the day, and again, didn't crush that one, but put it in a good enough spot to 
drive in the run, and Julia Gerard will hit now for the Falcons. And that one is foul. It was a little spinner there, spinning away from Pollard. It was interesting when it first came off the bat. I thought it might go into her, right to her glove, but just kept drifting. Looks at that one up high. Coach Crosby might be calling out the dogs a little bit here. And early in the game, she's very aggressive with steals to second. And uh, now with a healthy lead, she's letting the batter bat through. Riley McSherry now doing the catching, by the way. Cut and a miss there by Gerard. Cognetta's living on uh, low in the zone and change of speed. Foul the way there. Popped up, but that one's going to get out of play. McSherry over for a look, but not a lot of room in foul ground here either, but that one would have been out anywhere. High and away with that one. Gerard looking for her third hit of the game already here. And takes that one down low for ball four. So Burns moves up. Mentioned kind of a busy week. Tatino Grace will be on the road the next two days at Coon Rapids and at Andover. And meanwhile, for Armstrong, they've got home games later this week, uh, Thursday, Friday, against Anoka and Champlin Park. So a couple pretty good opponents for them. Dumas fouling this one away. That's the thing about the Northwest Suburban Conference. It's uh, two out of every three games you're playing a uh, top 20 team in, in Class 4A. Ooh, drives this one to deep right field. And it'll be to the fence on a bounce. It'll score one for sure and probably two. Throw into second, Umas hanging on with a double as two more runs score. And after they really pounded the ball early, they hadn't been hitting quite as many hard liners like that lately, but that one was a shot to right field the opposite way. And Dumas driving in a pair with that one. Aubrey McLeodon hitting. Takes that one for a strike. Dumas is one of the players that uh, Coach brought up from the JV team and told me that she had a strong arm and looks like she's got a pretty strong bat as well. 
Another little spinner foul past third. McLeodon looking for her first hit, although she did get on base via the walk to begin the contest here. And that one will be over for a called third strike to end the inning, but Armstrong coming up with five more runs in the frame. Our score is Falcons 14, Eagles nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. in command here as we go to the third. The nine, one, and two spots coming up for Grace. So Julia Downing leading it off against Peyton Erickson. Erickson's allowed a couple of hits and a walk and three strikeouts through two scoreless innings. That one is fouled on first base. Interesting thing too with Armstrong, you, know, you say, well, we got this big lead, but they don't really have subs to speak of it. And I don't, not sure if that by design, you, you mentioned uh, Riestenberg injured, um, but they've got other, you know, level other level games going on too, so they don't have really extra bodies, at least right now, to put in. Right, I think that uh, Coach Crosby told me they had 22 players in their program, maybe. Fielding a varsity and JV team this year. But take that back. That was Totino Grace. They're down on numbers to 22, just having varsity and JV this year. And that'll be a walk issued to Downing here to begin the third. And Pollard will bat now for Totino Grace. Back over to first, Downing back in. Pollard was a strikeout victim her first time up. Fouls this one at the plate. To third, and that one will get past. And then it gets past Fondo and left. Run is going to score for the Eagles. Now the throw back to second though, and they get Pollard. So Downing will score on the play. Pollard gets an RB, or will get a hit. Then Error was. on the left fielder, Fondo, letting this one go through her. But then they get the out at second. 
Yeah, I got that one seven five to four on the <laughs> relay to get the out at second. Moxness fouls this one back. So the Eagles get on the board. That's the good news. The bad news is, though, not a very good base running play there to be caught off second on that one. Meanwhile, if you're Armstrong, though, you're not loving the fielding on that play. Lind <laughs> kind of waved at it going by her at third, but then even more so the left fielder, Fondo, letting that one go under her glove way out there. Now, in fairness, there's a possibility this early in the spring it's not the greatest even ground out there, but you got to make sure you get over and cut that off. Yeah, I think they they both uh, tried to just use their glove, and you can do artificial turf or nicely groomed fields, and you can you can do that. But uh, early in the season, like you said, you have to probably get your body in front of it and stop it that way. Yeah, and get that glove dirty a little bit too. They didn't either of them had their glove all the way to the ground. Moxness a swing and a miss, and there are two outs, and Anderson will be the hitter now for Totino Grace. See that one kind of tighter up a little bit inside of Moxness. A little bit of an awkward swing there. Yeah. I do want to point out on that, on that uh, relay play, third baseman's, third baseman Sam Lynn uh, made a fake throw home, and that uh, pulled the runner off a second a couple more steps, and that was the difference. Um, even though there was no chance to get anybody at home and she wasn't going to throw it, so that was a heads-up play there. Especially for our younger players watching, sometimes you can make an out out of no out there if you uh, if you uh, use your head, not have to use your body so much. That's a good point too to not hang your head after you know having a ball kind of go by you that on the initial hit. And you want to get in good habits, even in the lopsided game too, which that you know, is a play that there's no harm in doing it either. If it doesn't fool the runner, no big deal. Right. Sometimes you have to do those plays 10 times and it will work once, but that one time will make a difference. And those are the kind of things that you work on during the season so you can pull them off in the section tournament. And that one will be through up the middle as Anderson, uh, nice job of Driving that one back up through the circle and past Erickson and into center field. So another base hit there for the Eagles, their second of the inning. And the shortstop Johnson will hit. Yeah, sharply hit ball, no real chance for Erickson. And then once it's past her, there was nobody in a position to have an opportunity at that one. Little mini conferences all over the field right now. The pitcher and catcher talking, the yeah. batter bat talking to uh, head coach Mike Solwald and uh, his daughter Julia coaching at first base, uh, conversing over there. And then us over here just sitting here talking, right? Yeah, you don't, no one wants to be left out. I think the only two people are left out were the umpires. No one's going to talk to them unless they uh, um, want to give them a little bit of guff. Johnson walked her first time up. Obviously you've coached a lot, Kurt, but it sounds like you're doing some umpiring as well. Yeah, I do uh, um, Northwest Suburban um, lower level games as the, as the plate umpire only by myself. And then I'm also doing some varsity games with two person crews like we see here today. All the varsity games have at least two umpires and then once you get the section tournament, you have three three umpires for each game. And as as much as you know, everybody likes to point out a call they think was missed and all that. It's a good thing we have them here. Wow, there's a rocket down the left field line. Fondo this time able to stop it. There might be a play at the plate. Here's the throw, not in time. Now a throw to third, and that one is going to be in time. Yeah. So that, was a, that was a picture perfect relay all the way around there. Grace will score a run, but then Johnson cut down trying to go to third, so give her an RBI, but then the Falcons get the out heading into third. We've completed three innings now, 14 to two Falcons.
CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. And welcome back. An eventful end to that uh, bottom of the third as uh, a very sharply hit ball by Julia Johnson driving it past third. Lynn could only watch it go, but this time Fondo did a good job getting to it, cuts it off. The throw home, not quite in time. It's a close play, but he, clearly safe. But then coming up throwing there is Gerard, and they get the out at third as Johnson trying to get there. So Armstrong executing a little bit better defensively. Johnson felt like she had gotten her hand in around that one, but does not uh, get that call. And they, she does get a run in, but they get the last out there at third. You know, sometimes you'd question trying to advance on that. I don't question at all on that because they just executed very well, and they almost had the out at home too. Right. Yeah, that was that was a good play all around, base running and on the field, and. Uh, Unfortunately for the base runner, we don't have uh, instant replay here, and I think uh, she would have been disappointed with the outcome either way because <laughs> she was out. <laughs> Couple of base hits already for Sydney Primer here as we go to inning number four. Eagles now on the board, but still trailing big. Following that one straight back. And catch made, nice job getting over to it by Juntilla there in foul territory. And get the leadoff batter here, and so Peyton Erickson will be the hitter. Yeah, nice job of running to the fence and making the catch near the fence versus jogging over and hoping to catch it on the run. Strike there, delivered by the second pitcher of the game for Grace Cognetta. See Erickson, a couple of base hits. Last time reached on an error. Skies this one out to center field, and it's going to hang up, though, and be playable. And so a long out for Erickson for out number two. I feel like a little bit of an easier sky to deal with than what we've had some points earlier in the game, too. We've had either bright sun or dark clouds, and now it's kind of in between, and that ball seemed to be red uh, nicely and well in center. Yeah, and she, Coach uh, just told me that she's the one returning outfielder, and you could tell with the, her drop step and her ability to uh, track the ball while she's backpedaling, a little bit more experience. That was a nice catch. Ray takes a strike here. Lifts that one foul and out of play. She can't wait to get back in the batter's box. If you go three for three with two doubles so far, 
like let's uh, let's get me back up here again quick. This is a really good outfielder too. We haven't had an opportunity to see it today, but I can remember the past couple of years, several really good catches. Two count here to Elizabeth Bray. That one was up. We have a feeling she's going to have a good whack at this one if it's in the zone. And drives it to deep left field. This one is out. Bray knocking one over the fence and left. You called that one, Kurt, as she got all of that one and delivers what is the first home run of the day for Armstrong. They've had plenty of extra base hits, but Elizabeth Bray going deep to left. They get a 15 to two score. They didn't want to have a one, two, three inning. They had so many base runners <laughs> those first few and the first two were retired this inning and she's like, mm, nope. Yep, she extended well on that one, head down on it. I think she probably felt that one as soon as she hit it. It was, it was high, so you, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't I think, wasn't certain tell it was, if it was out of here or it, not. But. Right, I wasn't certain it was gonna have enough to get out just because of how high in the air it was. Got under it a little more maybe than you'd like, but had enough power to get it out. And Lexi Madsen will be the hitter. Lexi hasn't really gotten in on the fun in terms of base hits, but a couple of walks in her three plate appearances. Yeah, some days your job is to get on base and other people drive you in and the next day it's the vice versa. But Armstrong seems to have a pretty potent lineup up and down the line, up and down one through nine. Kind of nice for them too that they've got a couple of left-hand hitters here in the middle of the order too. And there's Madsen delivering a base hit with Bray and, uh, and Madsen uh, with, you know, after the uh, righty Erickson hitting in the third spot and then Brady's coming down after them as well. So Fondo is up. Doesn't have a hit yet, but has knocked in a couple, both times with ground outs. And now does have a hit as she knocks that one to right center field. Madsen digging into third and will hang on there. So runners at the corners as Fondo delivers a sharp single. Gabby Burns will be the batter. They all seem to be extending their arms nicely and turning, uh, rotating their hips uh, to uh, really drive the ball and uh, their off season work seems to be working. And that'll be a short looper in the short center field and it will score a run as Burns didn't really get all of that one but got enough to get it over the infield and drop it in for a base hit. Yeah, that's one That's one. I think a good example I was just talking about. If she just uses her arms, that's probably a F, F6, but she turned her hips and had her head down on it and it, adds another 20 feet to it and that's a bloop single instead of a pop out to short. Nice job. Gerard is the hitter and she skies this one. Shortstop over to make the grab and the Eagles get out of the inning but Armstrong after getting the first two batters out the homer by Bray and then they score another so two runs in the inning. 16 to 2 Falcons as we go to the bottom of the fourth.
CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. New pitcher here for Armstrong as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Freshman Ella Cooley will come in to pitch. She will face the five, six, and seven hitters for Grace. So look around, I believe Erickson has just come out of the game, yes. But as I mentioned, they really didn't have much in the way of subs. So Cooley had come in as a runner earlier. Now she'll come in to pitch. Cooley was uh, the number one pitcher on their JV last year, so now this might be her first uh, appearance on the mound for varsity. Cognetta will be the batter here for Grace. She is one for one. Started the game at second and then came in to pitch. Coach Crosby told me that she had some good speed for her size and it looks like that uh, first two pitches had some little bit of jump on it. Cognetta takes another one low, so two and one. Lifted to right center, long run, Bray, an effort, but couldn't quite get it. Great effort. And Cognetta will have a single here to begin the fourth. I mentioned Bray kind of specializes in some diving catches and <laughs> almost got another one there. She had a long way to go to get to this one, though. Just nicked the edge of her glove. Yeah, I think between the right fielder and the second baseman, uh, she was the farthest away from that ball, but she was the one that uh, s broke into a sprint from the start. She wanted it. Looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter for Grace here as Riley Schuster will bat. Takes a strike there. Lining that one foul. Change up a little bit low there from Cooley. And that one is over the plate on the change up and catches Schuster looking for out number one. And now the catcher McSherry will bat. That was a good sequence for a young pitcher to throw back to back change ups. Both of them very near the zone. Looks like uh, Erickson and Cooley have differing styles and could be a good combination as games go by three or four innings each and to keep the teams off balance. McSherry fouls that one away.
three and one here to McSherry. Back to the pitcher. Cooley will throw to second for one. The relay to first is in time, and they turn the double play to get out of the inning. Good aggressive throw there by Cooley, and then a nice turn as well. So no runs, one hit, and no one left for Grace. We go to the fifth. It's 16-2 Armstrong. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. to the top of the fifth here as Armstrong in command. They started out with a six run first and have kind of never looked back. Trying to close this game out early here. It'll be the nine, one and two hitters coming up. Dumas will lead it off here for the Falcons. She smoked a double to right field her last time up. Agneta still in the circle for Totino Grace, their second pitcher of the game. Gets a first pitch strike there. Rip and a miss. I think it's a wise move to keep this ball near her knees. <laughs> When she's swinging, she's taking her best rip at it. And she makes some good contact like last time, and the ball's going to jump. Lifting it to left field, and this one will hang up. And the catch made out there by Downing. Or actually, let's see, that's not Downing out there anymore, I don't think. Number three. Grabowski had moved over there, that's right. Anderson's now in center. McLeod in the hitter. A little swinging bunt, nice pickup, but not gonna be in time. It'll be a base hit. McLeod getting her first hit of the game. That was in between a bunt and a swing. A little slap hitting there, and looks like she's got some good speed. That probably is a great tool for her to use in the leadoff spot coming up this year. Yeah, it was actually a nice play by the shortstop, but no chance to get her. Popped up, foul. Let's see if McSherry can get there. No, it's going to be out of play. She uh, did a pretty good job reading it, but ran out of room. Popped up in the infield, and ooh, and over to make the catch is Moxness, the second baseman. I think she was about the third person that I thought was going to play that. I thought <laughs> first I thought it was going to be the shortstop, then I thought it was going to be third baseman Pollard. And 
Instead, coming all the way from second, they were fortunate. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear anyone vociferously want to take that one. Everyone was in the neighborhood, but uh, someone's got to take charge there. Cooley will bat for the first time now. Takes that one up high for a ball as Erickson coming out of the game with the big lead and Cooley getting her chance to pitch and now to bat for the first time. A little roller. She can really motor, though, in a close play, but they get the out at first, and the inning will come to an end. So Falcons don't score here in the fifth. No runs, one hit. And we go to the bottom of five. It's 16-2, to two, Armstrong. Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. And welcome back. We go to the bottom half of the fifth. Armstrong trying to wrap this one up. Grace trying to extend the game here as they'll have the eight, nine, and one hitters coming up. Tori Knight will bat. Ella Cooley in her second inning in the circle for Armstrong got help from a nice double play that she started on a comebacker to get out of the fourth. Foul down the third baseline. I'm sorry, Knight, not the batter here, Jontilla, in the hitting in this eighth spot. Number two rather than one two, as I could see part of it. She offered it that one, yep. Change up that was short of the plate, but couldn't hold up. Grace made so many changes that I apologize. I a little bit lost track of who's playing where. And a cut and a miss on another changeup. And Cooley gets her second strikeout. That change getting her to chase. Downing is the hitter. There's a strike. Trying to catch up on my book too, too John. Uh when, we don't, when they don't report the changes to us over here on the CCX booth, it's kind of hard to keep up with them. Oh, sorry. sorry, Jay. Must be working with John later this week, huh? <laughs> There's a strike again to Downing. Oops, that one way up and away. I was say, I'm kind of been impressed with the approach of Cooley. I mean, she's not come in just like this is some mop-up innings or, you know, a pitcher that doesn't have a real, you know, grasp of what she's out there to do. She's she's come in and looked good. Yeah, I think she was number one, if not only only JV pitcher last year. So she got a lot of time on the mound, and uh, I'm sure she plays in the summer and. Looks like she has some good good skills for a young pitcher. Does walk Downing though. And Pollard will be the hitter now for the Eagles. So 
throw back to first as Gerard scooping that one out of the dirt. And that one will be through for a base hit. Couple of hits today for Pollard. So first and second one out and the uh, heart of the order coming up here, Moxness will hit. Fouling this one back into the screen. This is the type of game that's probably perfect for both of the number two pitchers who came in later and had don't have very much experience either. And that one knocked up the middle for a hit. They're going to hold the runner, not take any chances, so the bases will be loaded. Moxna stayed with that changeup, brought it back through the middle, and now they're full for the number three hitter, Anderson. Takes a strike here. Couple of hits today for Anderson, so Eagles trying to get a rally going here. And the Falcons should just be looking for any out. Any out's a good out at this point. If you can get two, great, but uh, let's make sure we get one someplace. Interesting to see if she comes with the change here up 0-2. Nope. Up a little high there, one and two. Might be setting her up for it there with the high fastball. The next sequence is usually a low low change or a low drop. Had a ball come in from baseball field there, so Left that one high and away. There's nowhere to put her here either. That's the thing. Sometimes these last outs can be the hardest ones to come by. There's no clock that runs out. You have to actually get the outs. Lifted to right field. Catch is made, but it will score a run. As Downing tags up to score, but Armstrong does get that important second out. Heads up by the runner on second, she tagged up two. Pollard does get over to third, Moxness holds up at first. And Johnson is the hitter. She hit the ball very hard to left field last time. Got as far as second, but then was cut down trying to advance to third after the throw came into the plate. Takes a strike here. She's kind of, she's a young player, but it got that, just a little swagger about her. You can tell she's a, a good softball player. Yeah, no doubt. There's a strike. Swing and a miss, and Cooley will win that battle and gets Johnson on strikes to end the game here. The Eagles do get one run in the inning on a couple of base hits. But it will be Armstrong winning on the 10 run rule, 16 to three in five innings. Boy, Kurt, they came out hitting right in the top of the first and just kind of set the tone right away. Yeah, I would think that uh, that would be a Big confidence builder for their offense. They ran the bases aggressively and took advantage of every uh, opportunity they had. And um, 
I'm sure they hope they want to get back on the field uh, again as quick as they can. Again, a couple road games later in the week for Grace, a couple of home games for Armstrong facing Anoka on Thursday and Champlain Park on Friday. Hope you've enjoyed this one here today, and best of luck to both of these teams the rest of the season. It is Armstrong defeating Totino Grace here this afternoon. In five, the Falcons prevail 16-3. to So long from Totino Grace.